Welcome to a stroll through my terrarium. This is probably my most successful terrarium and uh, definitely the longest uh, running for probably over a year now. Um, one thing to note, all of the plants in the back and the majority of the plants that are in this are a purple waffle plant. And one thing special to note about this plant is that it seems that it's impervious to isopod num 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 and snails as well. It's, it's like nothing can destroy this plant. In uh, all of my terrariums that I've had this plant in, it remains the last plant standing. Uh, you can also see those dead leaves there are from my money tree plant, which is going through a rough patch right now. There's some creeping fig, and then there is a, uh, I don't know if that's an azalea or something else random that I put in there that's actually doing really well. Um, you'll notice there's a lot of snails. Um, I did, back in the summer last year, I was pulling the snails out, putting them outside to try to reduce their population. Over the winter, I didn't feel comfortable doing that, so I just let them go. But they seem to be living quite nicely along with the isopods, although we'll see in a little bit here um, some activity between the two. Uh, these tend to be later in the evening when I'm doing these observations. And I notice they definitely do come out, even though there's a light on in the room, there's still a lot more that come out in the evening and uh, this is a clear top that I have on this that I put on on the weekends for fun but it doesn't stay on very well it kind of starts to bow once the temperature starts to change and it's actually possible that isopods could get out so I I only put this on for short periods of time and I have another uh, thicker lid that I put on that's not as transparent so I want to fix that sometime soon. So I'm not sure what I was looking at here. Oh, okay, yeah. So we might see some isopods riding on top of snails or snails riding on top of isopods here pretty soon. Okay, so this is actually a completely different terrarium, and I, I don't have a, a full view of this, but this is... Um, what happened when I put a centipede inside to try to control the population of these isopods. Um, he was a fairly big centipede, and I say was because he didn't make it very long. Uh, I wasn't expecting this. Now, I do have some centipedes in some of my other terrariums, um, and I noticed that they're not really harmed much by the armadillidiums, but these Porcelio, um type or other similar types that are more protein hungry um, they seem to be you know just going at it here so they basically cornered him and that was it so within the next 24 hours he was he was gone um, again had I known that was going to happen I probably wouldn't have done that I kind of feel bad but um, it was an experiment to see if I could reduce this population I'm going to have to split this population out pretty soon and some of these guys are getting pretty big uh, and so far this is all just uh, stuff that I've collected from my local area here um, I do have a colony of dairy cows which are not uh, native to this area but they are in a completely separate tank that I could care for a completely different way uh, I tend not to experiment as much with that tank so let's see what's coming up here next I hope he was tasty. Maybe he's barbecue flavored. Okay, moving right along. This was... I guess the morning after I put a bunch of uh, mealy worms in the tank 
and I had expected them to be gone by the morning. I didn't think there would be anything left, really. But here we could see some snails riding on top of isopods. Um, right there in the middle we got one. And basically underneath this is where the mealy worms are. They're dried worms. And uh, I guess they're just taking their good old time getting through them. And uh, depending on which position you're in at the time, you might become dinner if you're not careful. <laughs> so uh, I, I have seen evidence of that in the past, uh, usually with an isopod that is shedding its uh, outer shell. And I have seen snails take that opportunity to get a snack. But in general, if, if everybody's real mobile, that doesn't become a problem but we could see some somebody's hitching a ride there which whoa whoa which is pretty amazing i mean it's kind of funny but it's you're kind of thinking like what it would be like to be that isopod with that thing sucking your back and trying to get off you or trying to get a snack so I was really surprised by this. I actually, up until now, did not expect that there were this many um, isopods in this particular culture here. Um, I kind of thought that they were not doing very well at all, but then uh, they came out of hiding. And then this was not the first time I've given them this type of food. I've given them all kinds of different types of food. I definitely try to make it a variety. So here's a really cool picture of all of these snails just hanging out on the back of the tank. And um, I think this was the night that I counted um, about 40 snails of all different sizes. Um, and here we can see they've done a pretty good job on all that food there. I think this is another, so like a week later, and I gave them some eggshells and... Yeah, there's definitely a lot of interesting activity here. They do climb on the top, uh, and they'll be upside down for a while, but um, haven't had any escapees, so that's good. This gets um, very little maintenance on this. Uh, just watch out for anything major, but it's pretty stable, so I haven't had to really do much with it. Uh, I think when the summer comes, I probably will pull some snails out just to balance things out a bit, though. So thanks for watching.